Well, blimey. That's embarrassing, isn't it? First of all, Katie, thank you. <laughs> thank you for pointing out via one of the tickets. Um, hey, how come that recording in progress, Come Back Tomorrow, has been on the website for nearly three years? And the answer is, I did start recording this course <laughs> and did a, a lesson talking about the basics of what a subfile is. And then I got carried away with the next section, which was going drilling through uh, somebody else's subfile examples and completely forgot that I had started that initial lesson and never, ever finished it. So here I am back three years later. Better late than never. That's all I'm going to say. Now, in my defense, I might look and sound a little bit different because A, it's three years later, much grayer in the last three years. Um, and B, I'm in the USA. I'm in Oregon. Came up here for a family wedding. Um, and so I'm traveling with my laptop. So the video quality may not be as good as normal. And hopefully the audio quality is okay. I'm going to run this through Camtasia and try and do some fancy things with the editing. Let me take my watch off to stop it clanking against this table in the Airbnb up here in the uh, Oregon countryside. And let's begin. So what is a subfile? Right, so a subfile is a strangely named thing in IBM I world and also called a subfile on the IS series machines and also called a subfile back in the AS400 and earlier than that, System 38 and System 36 machines. A subfile is just a way of looking at a table of information on the screen. So really, if you're looking at a web browser now and you're paging up and paging down through content, that's kind of what we used to call a subfile. It's a way of looking at a whole file full of information on the screen where you can page up and page down and view that information changing on the screen. I don't know why they called it a subfile and not a visual file or something like that, but that's essentially what it is. Now, if you're writing in old fashioned RPG, the column based RPG, the stuff that dates back to uh, System 38, AS400 and I series years, then you'll probably be a little bit baffled when you look at the code because it has operation codes like suffle disp and suffle disp cuttle and suffle ins and suffle clear and page up and page down and you have a subfile record format in your display file you have a subfile control format in your display file you have to write things in certain sequences and if you're new to rpg these can all seem very confusing now luckily here's my recording in progress i actually found an old example on a blog dating back four years ago i actually wrote a blog about the differences between single page subfiles and expanding page subfiles. And I included some code samples. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this code sample and I'm gonna record a lesson and put it right here in this lesson. So walk through, we're gonna take it right from the beginning. We're gonna create a file. I'm gonna use modern terminology for all these things. So we're gonna create a table. An SQL table is an IBM I physical file. Some slight differences, but to all intents and purposes, it looks, feels, and handles exactly the same. Um, that file is going to have a bunch of fields in it. As if you look here on the screen, I'm going to have things like a customer code, a name, a birthday, an address, blah, blah, blah. Then we're going to write a display file over that table. And in the display file, we're going to define the fields that we want to display on the screen. Those are included in this subfile format. The R here, it's called Suffalo one and it is type subfile. And then we control how that subfile is displayed on the screen through the control format. This is called the Suffle control. This one says I'm a Suffle control for a format called Suffalo one. That's the one that's just above, right? And we define what it's going to look like on the screen. We say it's got a size of 20 and a page of 20. That means we're going to display 20 pages, 20 lines on the screen at any one time. So we're gonna load 20, and then when we pass the page down, we wanna go get the next 20, we will evaporate that subfile and load the next 20. And when we page down again, we'll evaporate it again and load the next 20. And if we page back up, we're gonna clear it and read back and load the previous 20. We say things like overlay. That means that when we display the subfile on the screen, this control format, which as you can see, has header information. We want to display it over the top. By default, when you write formats through display files, whatever's on the screen will be wiped. Sometimes I call it wipings, or I call it erasing, or I call it evaporating, you know what I mean. 
I like to use different words just to keep you on your toes. Then we define the main elements of the subfile. Just ignore the fact there are indicators down here. I'll go into that in a few minutes. What we care about is when it's written with subfile display activated, then we're going to display the subfile portion of the screen. When it's with written with subfile display control active, it will display the control element of the screen. And because we're overlaying, the control element might be the top section of the screen with the headers information, or it might be the bottom end of the screen where the function keys are. That's how I tend to do it. Every subfile I write nowadays, which is very infrequently because now it's mostly web-based code that I'm working with. But traditionally, I would have a screen format I would write first, which I would call a header, say header 01. I would write it with no overlay keywords, so it would blank whatever's on the screen and it would display the header portion of the screen, the title, date, time, perhaps some information like, you know, press five to select a line. Then I would write the control format with, now we can talk about the indicators. If I've got the indicator turned on that's associated with subfile display, that means when you write this control format, display the subfile in the middle. If I've got the indicator turned on for subfile display control, it would also write the control format on the screen. So you're going to end up with like these three portions on the screen. It will look like one screen, but you'll see a header at the top, the subfile in the middle, and the control format at the bottom, where I'd say, you know, F3 equals exit, F6 equals add, or, you know, select a line, anything you like on that control format at the bottom. Sometimes if you've tried to read uh, a file to load a subfile. If there's nothing to read in that file, if you write with subfile display turned on, the program will die because it's saying, I'm trying to display a subfile and there isn't one. I couldn't load it. So you get an error. And that's why you have these indicators over on the side to control these elements in your program. You'll notice there's another one here, subfile clear. Perhaps I'll do a whole separate lesson going through all of the elements and just I'll just type up what each one does. That's nice and simple. It's, it's actually pretty sensible and easy to understand if you think about it. Subfile display says I'm going to display the subfile if there's data in it. Subfile display control says I'm going to display the subfile control format on the screen. Subfile clear says if you write this control format with subfile clear turned on, it will clear the subfile at memory. It will initialize it back to blanks. So typically when you're writing the code, you'll write and you'll issue in your RPG a write to the subfile control format with subfile display turned off and subfile display control turned off, but subfile clear turned on or subfile ins, which initializes it. By doing that, nothing goes to the screen because disp and control are turned off, but clear will let you wipe the subfile in memory ready to be loaded with data. So you would typically do something like turn on the indicator that activates subfile clear, issue in your RPG code a write to the control format name that will clear the subfile. You then add rows to that subfile, read the table, add one to RRN, write to the subfile, loop, 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 until you reach the ma maximum size of the subfile or the maximum size of the page, however you want to control it. Then you would turn off the subfile clear indicator and turn on the subfile display and the subfile display control. Then when you do a write or an execute format of the control format, it will show the subfile and show the control. Make sense? As long as you're with me, I'm going to talk you through an example and record some short videos. I'll try and keep everything to 10, 15 minutes max. This will hopefully be the long, longest, 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 most waffly one. Um, you also have a thing called Suffle End. And if you're wondering what that does, all that does is it controls, back in the olden days, a little plus sign you would see down the bottom right-hand corner of the subfile area. And the plus sign would tell you that you could page down to see more data. Dunk, plus, dunk. When the plus sign vanished, you're at the end of the subfile. As RPG evolved from AS400 to I-Series up to the power systems of modern day, we've had power systems for what, 10, 15 years now? People still call it an AS400. Idiots. So Suffle End evolved also. You can see in this example, I've got Suffle End 
scroll bar star more. So what that displays in the smelly old green screen, it actually shows kind of IBM's attempt at a scroll bar like you see on your browser, which you can click on with your mouse rather than paging down. And it will also show a more word bottom right hand corner rather than a plus sign. So if you look at it and it says more, you know there's more to go. So you can either page down or you can click the scroll bar. Pretty intuitive stuff. Although all of the different keywords that are involved in subfiles can seem extremely daunting. So having said that, let's take this code example from the old blog. Um, in real time or real time-ish, I will take this code, compile it, and show you how to walk through it. And once you're done, I promise you, you will understand the essentials of how subfiles work with RPG. So without further ado, let's dive right in.